All right, so I just want to remind you again that my solutions are my solutions. They're sometimes more or less efficient than other solutions that can be found. Um, this one here is the same one for the 2022 AMC 10A problem 18 and 12A problem 18. So what I did, let T sub K be the transformation of the coordinate plane that first rotates the plane k degrees counterclockwise along with everything in the plane around the origin and then reflects the plane across the y-axis. I don't know, I don't want to think about it, right? What is the least positive integer n such that performing the sequence of transformations, okay, so you're going to do all of these transformations, not just one of them, all of them returns this point back to itself. So what I did is I first drew a picture to kind of make sense of it. For instance, one zero is right here. If I rotate the whole plane one degree, it would be something like this, where this angle is one degree with the x-axis. Obviously, it's not drawn to scale. I couldn't draw that small. Um, and then you reflect it over the y-axis, which is going to put it over here. Now, when you rotate the plane, it's still going to be one unit from the origin. Okay. Uh, when you reflect it across the y-axis, uh, the reflection is not going to change its distance from the origin. It's still going to be one unit from the origin. So that's kind of interesting. This would then be one degree here or 179 there. Okay, uh, then what? Um, next, that's the, first, that's the first transformation, actually. Let's just write it kind of here. You're going to go to, I'm going to think of it as, since the distance looks like it's probably not going to change from the origin, the original distance of 1, I'm just going to write the degrees. And I got this idea from thinking about R cis theta, which is a polar form of a complex number. I'm not going to break that down for you right now. It's a, a trig thing, so you got R cos of theta plus I sine of theta, but don't really worry about this that much. I'm just letting you know what made me think of how to do it this way. Basically, every number in the plane, in the complex plane, can be represented by its angle made counterclockwise with the x-axis and then times the radius. And our radius is 1, so it looks like the only thing that's going to be changing is the theta. And so that's what I focused on. So I've got 1, and then my next one is 179, which is 180 minus 1. Now what? That, all of that together is transformation one. Now you'll do transformation two. Uh, in transformation two, I'll get rid of that so it come down here and make it confusing. In transformation two, now what? You're located here, what's the first thing you do? You rotate two degrees counterclockwise, which will put you one below, and then you'll flip over here to hit one on the other side, one below that side of the axis. So where will you be here? You added two, you're at 181. Then you're going to flip all the way over to the other side and you'll be at 359. Interesting, so that's, uh, that's transformation two. Okay, let's see what happens next. So what are we doing right now? We don't know, and that's why we're just trying to find something to kind of get a feel for what this problem is doing because that's going to be how you break down what the undercurring, uh, undergirding mechanisms are. It's getting late. It's like 5 a.m. Okay, so uh, T sub 3 is going to be that you move 3 degrees from this point, because you're located here 3 degrees that way. Well, you're 1 below. You're going to be 2 above, so you'll now be at 2. And then you're going to flip that two across over here, and you'll be two before 180 at 178. Then you'll go to T sub four, and T sub four is going to be that you add four to this. If you add four to 178, where are you? 182, and then you flip over there across. You're now two degrees below. You flip across, you're going to be two degrees below on the other side. You'll be at 358. Let's do one more for good measure. I just want to verify something. It looks like we're getting a pattern. One, two, I suspect three. And sure enough, if you add five to this, you'll be three past 360. So your first move for T sub five is going to be to put you at three in this spot. 
So uh, how can we think about this? It's kind of interesting. It looks like these numbers here, one and two and three, you could say they correspond with that odd number. So this is the first odd number. The second odd number is three. The fifth or the third odd number is five and so on. Well, then it kind of seems like if I wanted to get to uh, T sub 359, what is that? Or three T sub 360, this is an odd number. So it would be the 180th odd number. So you can tell because it's 2n minus 1, 2 times 180, 360 minus 1. So the 180th uh, odd number would be this one. But we got to be careful. So it looks like you're going to hit, this is the first part of these transformations. It's not the full transformation. This is actually where it rests right here, right here. But the first number we can still utilize. So what's going to happen is you're going to get to T sub, let's see, it would be 359. And your first number, not the end of the transformation, will be to put you at 180. And what's going to happen next? After you rotate, you reflect over the y-axis and you will be back at zero degrees. And zero degrees is where you want to be because the distance from the origin never changed. And so this is actually going to be when you first get back to that point at 359. Now, there is one thing that we should be careful about, and I did go and check this on my work. I went and verified that near 90, there's no weirdness happening. I wanted to make sure that it didn't like, you're kind of advancing each time a little farther this way. I wanted to make sure when you got to 90, it didn't like do something weird and start going back that way. So that's gonna be it. It doesn't, if you go and check a few of those values near 90, it doesn't have that issue. So this is going to be your answer right here. Uh, I always just kind of look for patterns on these and seeing that this goes one, two, three, and it matches with one, three, five, it makes sense that it's the nth odd number is when you're here. Okay, so that's all we got for this problem and I will be on to the next one.